What's going on guys? Quick video answering uh, one question that uh, some of you asked me and uh, I started writing an answer but it turns out that it's to be the very loaded question I can't possibly answer it in in a comment, right? So I decided just to quickly make a, some some more content for you guys and then answering this question. So how about we jump into it? So this question comes from Shark Beak and it's a comment on my Node.js spinning up a lightweight Postgres instance and work with it on Node.js, right? And uh, basically the question says, hey, uh, I currently have the same setup on my side project. And uh, what do you think about having to create to call create table if not exist running on startup? Uh, that creates the table and then start your application. Is this a good idea or a bad idea? So just I'm re rephrasing. Uh, what he has here is like, see, he has some of the application when it starts, it connects as a user. And the first thing it does, it, it creates the table if not exists. So there is like a command, special SQL command that says, hey, create if not exists, right? And then consume the work. So uh, most of the cases, that's absolutely fine. And uh, however, I, I'm a little bit of a, when it comes to these kind of uh, DDL operations, I do not like to do them in the script. Sometimes I don't have a choice, but I, in this case, I, what I would do is I would make sure, first of all, that the user consume, the database user in this case, consuming the table, that is doing DDMLs on the table, inserting, updating, deleting, is different than the user who owns the schema or owns the table. It's just a practice that I learned over the year. I like to have a different owner, right? And this way I assign specific permissions to the user doing the DML operation. So uh, if, if the same user and I'm going to tell you in a why, why in a second, right? If you do what you're doing right now, which is uh, you spin up the application, and fairly, this is exactly what I did in the application, but that goes without saying that this is not production code, right? But what I say is like, when you spin up the application and you immediately create a table, by default, you own the table. So you pretty much can do pretty much anything with it. And that's not a good idea because... If that application, you're going to start spin it up to be a web application, which will have a lot of other consumers, which are anonymous most of the time, they're going to use the identity of that user to do DML on that table, right? So that's inserts, whatever, if you support deletes or updates, that stuff, right? Uh, in that case, that user, those users have full privileges on the table. So if you, if someone managed to sneak in an, uh, a SQL injection on you to drop the table, they will be able to drop it because guess what? Yes, they are anonymous from the HTTP layer, but the moment that that, that injection happened, XSS or whatever happened and it reached the, your backend application, it can sneak in into the database, right? And basically say, hey, select from where name is semicolon drop table employees and just like that you lost your table right because and and they can do that because they are here in the back end they are logged in as your user and you configured that they are the owner of the user so if they just sneak in they can drop the table bad idea right so what i like to do is so i would not recommend what you're doing in production so that's the short answer. What I would do is I would create the schema using a completely different script, right? And, and, and I'm going to create it as a specific user. I don't know. I'm going to call it app schema, right? I'm going to create the employees table in this case. And then when I want to consume, I'm going to create a completely different user for the application. I'm going to call it app user. And that app user, I'm going to be even a hard ass, a more hard ass. I'm going to create different database users 
and create different pools of connections because you have to use pooling. I didn't use pooling in that video, but you have to, guys. I'm going to create a different pool of connections for each route of application. If the route is going doing only reading, then I'm going to log in as a read only user and give that user app read, for example, and give it read permission on that table. And if uh, I am going through the route that is, I don't know, editing, then I'm going to do uh, give it only update. I'm not going to give it drop privileges because pr most of the time you're not going to drop a table in the web. So why do you give it uh, a full permission, right? Just having the full permission is just really scary, right? To, to access it through the web. And uh, I apologize, Sharkbeak, badass name, by the way. Uh, if, if you're not using this in a web application, you're completely doing as a script that you have absolutely no users whatever I'm saying does not make any difference, right? You can absolutely use your approach, right? If you want to, sp you run your script to set up those scripts, then absolutely, by all means, do it and do this if not create. And this is actually a great idea. The, especially if you're running a huge script that does a bunch of stuff, you want to be able to make it item important so you can run it over and over again and just what, what do they call additive, right? It just adds on top of each other. All right, guys, quick video. I wanted just to answer this question. It took me seven minutes to answer. So that's by no mean I could have answered that in a comment. So hope that makes sense, guys. Uh, and uh, I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. And ask me these great questions. Keep, keep them coming, guys. Love you.